County Cork versus County Armagh in women's Gaelic football. And we've got Dara Keeley. Going to make a great play. Number seven in red. Ready? Number 29's got it. She gets it to her. Bounces around. Hot potato. Hot potato. Number seven's open. Dara Keeley. Watch this. To her foot. Boom. Over her head. It was too fast. Hold on. I'll slow it down. She scores. Ties the game. Look at this. She's going to fake it over her head like a little kid. Kicks in. Ties the game. That's something you missed that you never planned on watching. And this is everything you missed that you never planned on watching it. Today's episode is brought to you by DraftKings. Boom. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Bop, bop. We had a boxer break out a little peekaboo punch to the face. Peekaboo didn't punch that time. Tricked you. Look at the replay here. I mean, he's really saying it. Peekaboo punch. Peekaboo punch. That's Julian Quiet Storm Smith. He's legally deaf. That's why he's got the cool nickname of Quiet Storm. He was a huge underdog in this and just came out swinging, knocked him down early, knocked him down again here in the eighth. They're just going at it. I think he knocked him down four times in this bout. Our guy, Dan Canobio from Inside Boxing Live, was on the call and got to see all this showboating in the ninth round. He was feeling cocky, shimmy in the shoulders. Dan Dancing, you know, poking around, just having fun. Plays a little peekaboo, as we saw. Peekaboo, boom. Uh, man, Velasquez was undefeated, and he just got beat. I mean, it went the distance, but Smith knew he was going to win. He didn't hear no bell. He just kept fighting. Down, knocked him down like four times. Man, it says here, Velasquez was being built up to fight a world championship in the near future if he didn't lose to Smith. But guess what? He lost to Smith. Not good. I like that shot right here. Look, ready? He's down, and this cameraman all over it. Ooh, cut to the ringside camera. Right on top of him. How do you feel? Not good. Not good. Wish he would lay off. I'm getting dizzy. Bam. Easy peasy for Julian Quiet Storm Smith. Not really. I don't think it was easy, but he sure had fun, and he played peekaboo. That's something some of you may not have missed, but a lot of you missed it. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. That's something you missed because you never planned on watching it. Now you're kind of like, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have. I know Dan was on the call. As I said, this episode is brought to you by DraftKings. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring the episode, and thank you guys for watching. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use promo code MIST. You can bet just $5 on any wager, and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly. All right, now let's keep going to something I bet at this point a lot of you have not missed. You've seen, but I needed to talk about it because it's so cool, and I have so many questions that I'm hoping maybe some of you can answer. We're going speed skating where we have 17-year-old Chinese speed skater Yang Yingru who puts up a display no one's ever seen before. So speed skating starts slow. It is kind of a weird sport that like they kind of just really start skating hard at the very end, but not not her. So she's going to take off early. They have a lot of laps. No one else is going to do this. So if you've seen this already, she takes off. If you haven't seen it, pay attention. She takes off and just is going so fast. And everyone's like, what are you doing? You're going to burn yourself out. This is crazy. What she does is she catches up to the pack and now she's in first place, even though she's at the very end. So they have to remember, hey, she's in first, but there's two skaters from China wearing the same outfit. They're different numbers. So they could be confusing because the other one now goes ahead in the middle and maybe they think that's her. That doesn't even matter. They just straight up forget that she did that. And I don't know how this strategy hasn't been done before. And is, is it going to be done in the future? Because what happens is as she crosses the finish line here, they say final lap. So she's in first place. Everyone is behind her, even though they're in front of her. She crosses. Now it's her final lap, but it's no one else's final lap. They all have to do two more laps, finish this one and another one. They forget. That's what China is hoping. So right now there's a mad dash to finish it. And the other Chinese skaters in the middle, notice she doesn't put her toe out to reach out. She stays skating. The other two skaters think this is the finish. So these two think, I mean, that, that one thinks she just got first place. The other one thinks she got third. They both got nothing. There's first place. And then look at all the people on the side like, no, go, go, go. And they stop skating. But the other 
uh, Chinese skater remembered, and now she crosses, and she gets second, and the the girl who thought she got first didn't even place, and I love the high five between them because they're just like, yep, we did it. There you go. Next up, we're going back to the Africa Cup of Nations where we have South Africa and Cape Verde. Talked about them last time. They're going to penalty kicks. And the goalie from South Africa puts on an absolute display. Guesses correct there, makes the save, shows no emotion about it. Just everyday type of stuff for him. His name is Ronwin Williams. And I believe, I think he got named captain. This is the coach all the way on the right. He came from Belgium and he is beloved by his players and he has made the team into something worth worth cheering for. He's given them pride. They're in it. The goalie guesses correct again, makes the save again. Two for two. Does he smile? Does he celebrate? No. Job's not finished. It's incredible. I love how stoic he's staying. Look at his coaches. They're fired up. That's a knowing look. I gotcha. The fans, holy shit, we're going to win this thing. But then... We get a miss. And the other goal, he celebrates a little. He didn't even touch it. And then a third save in a row. They tried to go to his right three times in a row. It didn't work at any time. The fans were like, uh, score here and it's big, but no. Cape Verde goalie makes a save. So now we're actually getting close. If this goes in and it does go in, he guessed correctly. Yeah, he guessed correctly. That's so cool in my opinion that he even guessed correctly. Four for four guessing. Okay, here's the fifth kick. So he saved the first three. He let in the fourth. If he makes the save here, South Africa wins. But can he really save four out of five? Yes, he can. <laughs> and immediately points to his coach. I love this. He immediately points at his coach. They're all running on the field. And he runs. They're all trying to tackle him and look at him, point out his coach. Dude in the white hair. He's got a cool name. I'm forgetting it right now. I apologize about that. Points at his coach, says, no, dude, I'm hugging that dude. That's the one I want. His coach knows it. And look at them. A moment. That is awesome. Gave me chills. Just, no. Uh, someone helped me get here, and that's him, and he's getting my hug. I thank that guy. Uh, South Africa actually came in third place. This goalie had another tremendous performance in PKs again. And even though they didn't win, they, everyone's very happy. Everyone's very happy they brought pride back to the team. And that goal is awesome. Last up, we got the Hexagon Cup paddle. This sport's insane. I mean, it's tennis. I think they're using something very similar to tennis ball, if not a tennis ball. Rackets that are double-sided, and all the walls are in play. So there's a strategy to smash it, but then it's going to go up. You can run outside the glass and hit it back in like that, which is nuts. Sometimes if you smash it too hard, they're just going to let it hit the glass Oh, and watch that. That was cool. He tried to, so this is the first one. He goes outside, gets it. The second one is really cool because what he tries to do is slam it into their own net. So there's no way they can return it. He's trying to slam that right down and it just dribbles into their net, but he doesn't let it travel far enough. He's not far enough away. And he's like going through the motions like, damn, damn. And then later on, we got some more cool plays. I watched a ton of this and just the different style of sh shots and strategy like that interested me because that's a big old slam, but it's just going to go off the glass and then he can slam it down. Now, if that goes off the glass right here and he misses this and it lands, that's their point. So you can still slam it, but he wins by slamming it so hard. Boom. It goes out of play. This is a crazy sport. I think Evan Longoria, I think he tweeted, he's all in on paddle or wrote it on Instagram or something. So it's wild. I watched the whole tournament and the dudes were putting on a show. So we got Wantello versus, I believe, like the Nadal Academy in blue. And just the amount of different shots they can do is crazy. Smashes it. They want to go soft sometimes. They want to go hard other times. That's all sports, I guess. Look at that. Bounces it out and they win. And they deserve to win. They had the most fun. And there was a bunch of other times in this match where the blue team just smashed it right into their chest. So they got the bruises to show for it. That was the Hexagon Cup. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Appreciate you guys as always. If you enjoy things that you missed that you never plan on watching and getting in the know about stuff, maybe you never knew existed, subscribe to the channel, comment, like, review, all that stuff. And also let us know who's your fan of the week. Yeah.